In this video, we're going to prove that every Cauchy sequence is bounded. Before we start the proof, maybe let's recall what it means for a sequence to be Cauchy and what it means for a sequence to be bounded. So recall a sequence A sub n is said to be Cauchy if for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find a positive integer, say capital N, such that for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, the terms get closer and closer together. In other words, the absolute value of a sub n minus a sub m is smaller than epsilon. And a sequence is bounded, so a sub n is bounded if we can find a positive number, say m, such that the absolute value of the terms is less than or equal to m for all positive integers, little n. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the proof. So proof. We'll start by assuming we have a Cauchy sequence. So suppose a sub n is Cauchy. And if it's Cauchy, we have this, this definition here. For all epsilon greater than zero, there is a positive integer such that all of this is true. So let's pick an epsilon. How about we pick one? Well, why one? It doesn't really matter as you'll see when we finish the proof. So set epsilon equal to one. Then by the definition of Cauchy, there exists a positive integer such that for all little n and little m bigger than capital N, the distance between a sub n and a sub m is less than one. So we somehow need to show that the absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to m. And all we have is this inequality, so we need a little bit more. So one way to do this is to fix a specific term uh, as follows. So for example, set little m to be equal to n plus 1. Okay, And this is useful because this is bigger than n. Right? And so we'll be able to use uh, this, this condition here. So then, for all little n bigger than n, we have the absolute value of a sub n is equal to a sub n minus a sub little m plus a sub little m, right? And this is less than or equal to the absolute value of a sub little n minus a sub little m plus the absolute value of a sub little m. And m here is fixed, little, little m is fixed. This is less than one plus the absolute value of little a sub m. If we like, we can write it as follows, maybe for clarity, just to emphasize that it's fixed. This is a sub big n plus one. So what we've done is we've found an upper bound. We've found a bound on the absolute value of a sub n when little n is bigger than capital N. That's why we needed to fix something or just set something down in stone so that we could bound this uh, using this condition. Okay, so we have a bound. Let's write it again. So the absolute value of a sub n is less than one plus the absolute value of a sub big N plus one. And this is true for all little n bigger than capital N. Now for a sequence to be bounded, it has to be bounded for all natural numbers, right? So this is only true for little n bigger than n. So what we have to do is we have to bound the terms before, before, before these. So we're gonna set big M equal to the maximum, and we can just take the absolute value of all of the terms of the sequence prior 
to the ones that we have bounded. So uh, let's see, this is this works for little n bigger than capital N. So we can go to a sub big N. And then let's invoke or include this piece here. And so now we're set. So then for all n, we have the absolute value of a sub n less than or equal to big M. And, and that completes the proof. Now, if this last step is unclear, it's because you do have to think about it. Um, let's actually clarify it if it's not clear. So if n is bigger than capital N, we know that the absolute value of a sub n, you know, that's less than one plus the absolute value of a sub big N plus one. And that's certainly less than or equal to big M because big M is the max of all of this stuff. If n is less than or equal to n, well, the absolute value of a sub n, that's less than or equal to the max of these guys. And that's certainly less than or equal to big M because big M has an additional number. So in any case, the absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to big sub n. Is this necessary to do in the proof? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's clear here, but it does require uh, some thought. I hope this video made some sense.